Hello and welcome back to Let's Make a Game in C++ This is going to be episode 7, 7 and in this episode we're going to create and draw the bricks on the screen My initial plan was to do creation, rendering and collision detection in the same episode but after a failure, failed attempt of recording the episode I saw that it was just too much logic at the same time so I'm going to split these two things into two episodes and in this episode we only have the creation and rendering uh, I might also give a warning out here because we're getting into really heavy logic in here well not that heavy but it is kinda heavy we're going to use a lot of loops, arrays, structures and this is like middle range advanced stuff in C++ and as I said in the first episode, if you do not have any experience in C++, then this is probably not for you. Um, you also have to know structures and arrays, at least something till now, because we're going to use them in this episode. And so if you're still here, if you know C++ enough, if you think you're going to understand what I'm going to tell you, then open up your ID or text editor and get to the code because we'll dive right into it with the structure of the brick as you might know a structure is basically a group of elements bound together under a name so it's a user-defined uh, user defined type yes a user-defined type and we define it using the keyword structure struct and then we name it we're going to call it brick and then in parentheses we define which elements are going to be under the structure brick and we're going to hold four variables four elements and uh, this is going to be the x and y position of the brick and the width of the height of the brick so that's four so let's simply tell them here float x float y, float width, and float height. These are the four elements that are under the structure brick. And we can simply use them in the main program. Let's use them after the balls variables. So after there is going to be brick elements and how we use a structure is we define it like a normal variable so the name first brick and then the name of the variable let's call it test and now we can simply access the elements of the test object because test is now an object because it has a structure for type and now we can access the elements of the test object by using a dot so test dot x x is the element the first one as you can see float x and then we can set it to some number like 10 so x of the object test is going to be 10 and we could do the same for y width and height let's just do a simple output so you can see that test x compile and run and we can it output a 10 as we defined up here so let's close the project and let's get right into an array if you know or not an array is um, is many very vari many variables under the same name so let's make first an array of numbers int numbers and then under parenthesis squared one uh, we put how many elements are going to be in the array let's make them 20 so now we have a variable named numbers that has 20 elements in it and each one is a type of int so a number and now we can access those variables with an index 
An index is the number we put in the parentheses to define which element of the array we're going to access. And indexes always go from 0 to, in this uh, one, to t uh, 19 because that's 20 elements. So it always starts at 0. So numbers 0 is 50. Numbers 1 is 60. So the first element, which is index 0, is now 50, and the second one is 60. And now the easiest way to go through an array of numbers or structures or whatever is a for loop. And we're going to use the for loop later to define the positions of the bricks. And let's create those bricks. Type is brick. We're going to call the variable bricks. And we're going to use... Actually, I'm going to make a variable constant static variable uh, number let's call it bricks and uppercase and I'm going to set it to 10 I'm going to use this variable as a um, global defined of how many bricks I have so I can put in bricks and so I don't have to change the number everywhere in the program so I have a constant somewhere defined up here now we have 10 bricks it's a type of brick it's an object it's an array of object called bricks and there's 10 elements in it and now you can simply access the first element by doing bricks element 0 index 0 which is the first element dot x is equal to 10 so we access the first element x variable, which is this one, and we set it to 10. Let's output that. Bricks, first ones, x, and coupon and run. Bricks, constatic, oh sorry, integer, bricks. And as you can see here, it output a 10, which is exactly as we set it here. Now, this was basically explaining how structures and arrays work. Now let's use that in our game. We have our structure up here, and we have our initialization here, or definition. And now we're going to use a for loop, which is basically the simplest way to access an array of elements, to go through every single one element in the bricks array and set the x and y width and height variable to something we want. So for int n, I use n in many tutorials you'll see j or i, I usually use n is equal to 0 and is less than bricks so we can change bricks here and it will go till the end no matter how many there are and n plus plus that's a basic for loop and now we have to simply change every bricks variables so bricks and we're going to access at the index n with actu which actually changes throughout the for loop so n dot x is equal to 10 bricks current one in the for loop dot y is equal to 10 bricks n dot width is equal to let's say we have 640 fine let's say the width is going to be let's say the width is going to be 60 and bricks height is going to be 20 what we did here is using a for loop we iterated through each object in the array and set its x, y, width and height 
variables to a certain number. And now we have all the bricks at the same position. We will change that later because we want them in a row. But let's go to rendering. Here we have the rendering part of the ball and here's the pads rendering. And we can imme immediately start rendering the bricks here. Let's choose a color, gel color for UB. Let's make them blue. 0 for red, 0 for green, 255 for blue and 255 for alpha. So that's blue color. And we can already start rendering. So gel begin gel quads as you already know and gel end at the end now in between here we can use a for loop to go through each of the elements in the array and draw them because OpenGL draws a rectangle for every four vertices or edges it gets so we can actually do uh, so we can actually set many of them here and it will know it will separate them to a group of four and it will draw rectangles so we can use a simple for loop for int n is equal to zero and is less than bricks and n plus plus and now we have to tell it the four edges of the brick so the first the upper left edge is gl vertex to f is bricks dot n dot x and the y position is bricks dot n dot y so that's the upper left corner of a brick and let's do the same for the other four edges other three edge edges we add the width the bottom right edge lots of typing here and the bottom left edge and this should do it let's compile this and run and we have a brick up here uh, there are actually uh, how many? There, there are actually 10 bricks up here but because all of the bricks have the same y and x position they're rendered each on top of the another so we only see them as one brick now let's change that and we're going to change it in the first for loop where we define the x and y position and we're going to use another two variables an x and y variable which we are going to change in the for loop so that each next brick is going to have a higher x and we're also going to change the y position so we need another variable let's call it x and the starting position is going to be 4 and we're also going to need a y which is going to be starting at 10 and at the end of the iteration of the loop we increase x for let's say Uh, let's say 64 I hope I calculated that correctly now we want to set the current bricks X to X and the current bricks Y to Y and let's see what we get now yeah we see that we have now a lot of bricks but they still go off of the screen because they still have the same Y variable and we have to make an if statement if here uh, that we're going to check if x is somewhere near the right edge of the screen that it should increase the y position and put the x position back to 4 so if x is larger 
then let's say 580 then x is 4 and y is plus equal 30 so if we're, we are at the right edge of the screen somewhere there we put x back to 4 so we're going to start setting the bricks from the left side of the screen again and we increase the y, y position so they're going to be a little lower than the ones before let's compile that and run it I think I'm going to need to lower this a bit 560 let's see what we get and yes it works let's just make a little less of a gap between here so let's increase y by 25 and now we have a nice array of bricks and now if you want more bricks we simply have to change this first static number let's say we want to have 40 bricks uh, 1 2 3 4 5 45 bricks so we have a nice field screen with bricks um, and this is basically the rendering and creation of the bricks it's not really perfect there's a cap at the right we would nu need some calculations to make some nice achieved let's just increase x by 45 to see what we get 46 or 66 and it looks a little nicer now as you can see we have a lot of bricks 45 at the moment they're all rendered and positioned correctly but the collision detection doesn't work which we're going to do in the next episode but we had a lot of logic this time we had the structure we had an array of objects and we used a for loop to iterate through the array of objects and the first for loop is a little more complex because we use it to set every brick's width and height which is the same but we also use it to set a different x and y position for each brick and we use a normal x which is constantly updated and a if statement to go to the next line when we reach the right edge of the screen the rendering part is more simple for loop because it simply just goes through every element in the array and draws it on the screen. And this is basically everything for this episode. Uh, let's just do a little extra because this episode is kind of short. Let's say we want that every second brick is an other color. And let's do that by doing an if statement here if the current n modulated by 2 is equal to 0 then gl color for ub is going to be green and blue together at I don't know purple <laughs> I don't know and else gl color for ub is blue Uh, what the modulation does, uh, modulation by 2 returns if a number is dividable by 2 or not. So this to this if else statement should get every second brick colored purple or yellow. Actually light blue. And we have a nice pattern up here which looks pretty nice. Uh, that's everything for today's episode you can try playing around with colors maybe adding more bricks by changing the constant maybe try alternating the width and the height of the brick and how much they move between an iteration in the for loop and that's basically for episode 7 we created the bricks and rendered them on the screen See you next time when we're going to check for collision detection and destroying of the bricks. Goodbye.